we ye kane u ami, ase ne kra se mi alehem. The verse I just quoted in the modern Hebrew tongue is Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, who are called by my name, this verse has eluded both scholar and layman for centuries, but not the Eves, the Hebrews of West Africa. What this verse is telling us is that when you find out the proper name of God and his correct pronunciation, you will find his people because they are called by his name. The answers Bible scholars have presented to us about this name of God has been based on guesswork. How come God's name and its correct pronunciation have eluded these scholars, and yet the Eves, the Hebrews of West Africa, insist we have known this name of God in every land from ancient time, and it's never been lost to us. Well, the reason is because the original Hebrew scripts used by Moses and the prophet consist of pictures of everyday objects in the Eve culture, the Hebrew culture in West Africa. When put together, they form words. When the words are put together, they become statements and sentences. So an ancient Israelite does not have to be literate to read and understand ancient Hebrew. All it takes to understand what it's saying is by looking at the pictographs. As we mentioned in part two of this series, the ancient Hebrew symbols are consonants. The modern Aramaic Hebrew had to make up the vowels, what we call nekut, or the vowel points, the diacritical marks. They are all made up. But how did the ancient Israelite know which vowel to use if the letters were consonants? You see, to a non-Hebrew, the letters appear to be only consonants. But what the ancient Israelite, the Eves, see is completely different. Both the consonant and the vowels are in the name of the symbol. That means that knowing what the symbol means and their names is very important because if you get the name of the symbol wrong, the meaning will be wrong and your vowels will also be wrong. If one should Google the ancient Hebrew script chart and compare any two, you will find out they don't agree. The reason is simple, is because they are all based on speculations, not facts. By courtesy of Mawili Mauvi, using the Anglo dialect of the Eves in Eve Nyigba, let's see the amazing secret of the ancient Hebrew symbol. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a sheep, which is Ale in the Eve tongue. This is the partial name for the symbol because if you look carefully, the pictograph does not show a complete image of a sheep. You only see the sheep's head, which is Aleta in the Eve tongue. Aleta has three syllables. Now, the rule. This is the rule. The consonant used is always from the first syllable, which in this case will be A-L. The last syllable acts as the vowel, which in this case is the A sound in the last syllable, ta. The A sound is represented by the letter A in English. Remember this rule. Put this rule in your spirit. Actually, let me repeat it to clarify it. When you take the first symbol of the ancient Hebrew, its full name is Aleta. Aleta has three syllables. The rule is that the consonant used is always from the first syllable, which in this case will be AL from the AL. The last syllable, which is our focus, acts as the vowel, which in this case is the A sound. The A sound is represented by the letter A in English. This is why if you get the name and meaning of the symbol wrong, you will get your vowels also wrong. Since we now know how to find the missing vowels, let's look at the name of God, reading from right to left. 
What you have here in the first symbol is a hand fled out fan in air. Air in Eve, ancient Hebrew is Ya. As you have realized, that is just the partial name for the symbol. The full name is Yashi, a hand fanning air. If you remember the rule, the consonant used is always from the first syllable. So in this case, is the letter Y. The second pictograph is He, which means to pull. That is the partial name. The full name is He, He. He means to support or block. Look at this photo and you will notice it looks like the symbol. The lady in the photo is using her raised arms to support the load on her head. The scarf is also serving as a cushion. Remember the rule. The consonant used is always from the first syllable. So in this case, it's the letter H in English. The third pictograph has confused Bible scholars for centuries. Some call it Vav, represented by the V in English. Others Wav, represented by the W in English. It's actually both Vav and Wav. The word is V. There is no corresponding letter for V in the English language. It means a gorge, a funnel, a narrow groove. The consonant used is always from the first syllable, as the rule says. So in this case, it's V in the English. The last syllable, as explained earlier, is the consonant H. So we now have the consonants in the modern Hebrew, Yud, He, Vav, He, what we call the tetragrammaton, which is Latin for the four letters. So now, which vowels do we use so we can correctly pronounce this name? Remember our rule for the vowels. The last syllable acts as the vowel. I'll repeat that. The last syllable acts as the vowel. When you look or when you take the first two symbols of God's name, reading from right to left, you have Yashi and Hehe. They are the letters Y and H, and the last syllable that gives us the vowel is the H sound, represented by the letter E in English. When you apply it, you have Ye. We do same with the last two symbols, V and He, He. The letters V and H. The last syllable that gives us the vowel is the S sound represented by the letter E in English. When you apply it, you have V. When you put the two together, you have God's name, Yehveh. The text we started with reads, If my people who are called by my name, the name of God is Yehweh, and the name of his people is Eve. what is rendered in English as Hebrew. You notice that the name of God's people can be found in the name of God, Yehweh and Eve. That's the scripture. If my people who are called by my name, Yehweh is the God of thunder and lightning. And we have known him by this name since ancient time, since the revelation at Sinai, way before the missionaries came to Christianize us. We have never forgotten his name.